Welcome back, Gems, to another wonderful episode of the Grateful Gem Podcast. I'm your host, Jasmine Chanel, and today's topic is going to be how to deal with the wrong support. Stick around because gems are definitely about to be dropped and you don't want to miss out. So get ready. I need everyone listening to this podcast episode to follow us on Instagram at the Grateful Gym Pod and also follow me at Jasmine Chanel. Don't worry, I spelled everything out and left it in the notes below. Take a look. See you there. Now let's get into this episode. Welcome, Gems. I'm so happy you're here. We're on episode 38, and I'm super excited. Um, I think this is a great topic because there's a lot of this that's been going around. And I haven't really got a chance to dissect it. Um, I waited a little while. I wanted to put it out last weekend, but I wanted to make sure this is what I was supposed to be saying. So I'm going to put it out this week and hopefully you guys can resonate with this. Um, I know for me personally, it has been something that I have battled with for a long time. And these experiences are truly ones that I wish I would have never encountered, but we have to go through things in order to learn. So every trial is a learned lesson. You learn something from everything that you go through, so don't forget that. Um, So today we're going to be talking about how to deal with the wrong support. So before I get into this episode, first of all, hold up. (laughs) I want to say thank you. Um, I know I said this a million times, but I genuinely just want to say thank you for you guys listening in, tuning in, sending me your feedback. I'm really, really grateful um, for what God has been doing with the Grateful Gym Podcast, for each and every new listen, for each and every new subscriber. I just want to personally say thank you because you guys don't know how much this means to me. And I just want to say thank you. Um, Again, if you have any insights or anything that you would like to see on the podcast with the live podcast, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You guys have my handles. I will link them in the episode notes. Again, a lot of you personally know me. So reach out to me. Let me know what you guys are thinking. And yeah, we'll go from there. Um. So now that I got that out the way, (laughs) let's get into this word, honey. So, (sighs) take a deep breath. (laughs) I'm so dramatic. Okay, so how many of you guys have ever been in a situation where you feel like you have support, but the support that you have is not the correct support? And some of you may be saying, well, what is the correct support? So let's define what support is. Support is being able to help someone or believe in something when that person wants to pursue it. Being able to actually look into what someone is doing and actually say, hey, I support that. It doesn't mean that you have to agree because you can support someone and something that they're doing, but you don't have to necessarily agree. Um... If we look at the definition, it says give assistance to, especially financially, and able to function or act. So you don't necessarily have to give financially to support someone. But a lot of times when we think of support, we think of someone giving us something. So giving, um, let's take for instance, for example, the podcast, supporting. You guys support by listening. You guys support by sharing, um, letting me know how you guys feel, sharing it to other people that may help. And then you have people that support, they critique it or they have a lot of opinions about it but they haven't necessarily taken the time out to really listen to any episodes um they don't really know the fundamentals of the the story behind the podcast you know that's just an example so recently i have encountered some crazy encounters and i wasn't really going to speak on it because i feel like it honestly wasn't my place and i reached out to (laughs) you guys know my accountability partner and i was just letting her know about this experience i had and it was just oh it was mind-blowing because me and her had a conversation and she started talking about the same experience she had with someone else and i thought that was so crazy because not only does it show me that our relationship is genuinely god driven because i'm telling you 
there's so many things that when this first happened to me, we were involved with um a group and the lady there, we um I had already had my opinion. I was just observing and just trying to make sure that I was making the right decisions, making sure that this is wasn't you know, self-imposed. I'm really big on self-imposed right now. I want to make sure that everything that I'm doing is not self-imposed because I don't want to lead anybody down the wrong path. So I want to be able to give my God honest truth and to let people know how it is that I feel. And I had a conversation with her about that. We clicked on that and I was like, wow. And I told myself I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to give off prejudgment on this other person. And so I told her, you know, she was like, why you didn't say nothing? And I was like, no, I'm not that type of person. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to clout your judgment about how you feel about her. Because I may have personally experienced this. And to be real, I felt like in a period where I may have not experienced that. So I was just like, okay, maybe I'm thinking too much about myself. You know, um, that was just the point where I was just like, okay, girl, you know, scale down. You need to stop thinking about you. It's not always about you, 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 you. And so I try to, you know, just make sure that I'm not being self-imposed in anything that I dis- discover. So I'm talking to her about this encounter and I was just mind blown because literally the same things that I was saying was literally the same thing she was saying. I was like, God, this is crazy because it lets me know that I wasn't on this um, phone sounding crazy. Like I didn't feel this out of nowhere and so we had a conversation she was like you should talk about this and you guys know I don't want to just put anything out because I feel like it's the right thing to do I want to put it out because this is what you guys need and so I feel like right now it's the right time to do it because I feel like you know there may be a lot of people that are trying to get support they don't have the right support Um, I feel like there's people that want support that have support but they're not really um I'm not gonna say grateful um, I would say they have support, but the support isn't really the support. It could be also disguised as jealousy, honestly. Um, you have people that'll say, I support you, but they don't really support when it's time to support. And what I mean by that is when, you, when, the, when you're cooking the idea, when you're baking the cake, um, and the cake comes out of the oven and it's done, and you need people to taste it. It may not look good, but that person is like, oh, you know, girl, I was going to taste it. But, ooh, you know, just look. But then when you taste it, it's like, girl, okay, you know, it's my first cake. I'm just practicing. You know, I'm starting up something. It's good. And then the cake start hitting. And now that support is like, oh, well, girl, let me taste one of your cakes. And it's like, wait a minute. Because when I was from the nitty gritty, <laughs> when I was in the nitty gritty, you know, you weren't there. You weren't with me shooting in the gym, you know. And so I really think that we can take that and apply it to our real life because, um, like I said, this is a, a topic that I could go on about for days, but that's not what this, this isn't a soapbox. Um, this is honestly just talking about what I've dealt with when it comes to support, the right support and the wrong support. So um, that's how I want to dissect this. So I want to talk about uh, my experiences. And I want to talk about what's right and what's wrong when it comes to the support that you get. I'm not going to dissect this and tell you what was right and wrong about these situations. Because when I tell you about them, you're going to clearly be able to um, dissect them yourself. And you guys, you may hear me panting, but you guys know my situation. My asthma has really been bothering me today. So I have my water here, my inhaler. So if you hear me puffing on it. (laughs) A few times, it's because I'm dying, okay? But I would rather die and get this out to you than die and it be unsaid. (laughs) But for real though, I'm so serious. Okay, so let's get right into it. So, recently, um, I met, or I'm not going to say I met, I connected with someone. And... We we had a genuine connection, and I was just like, okay, cool, you know, da da da. I'm all for meeting new people, da da da. Cool, no no biggie. So, um, we went to talk, and we end up having a phone call regarding um some business ventures, and so. On the phone call, to be honest with you guys, I was honestly just... In the beginning, I was fine. I was like, okay, you know, this is meant to be. But as the conversation kept going, I felt that though this wasn't the call that I needed to be on. 
Um, I felt like, you know, there was just a lot of things that I didn't personally agree with. Um, I feel like for me, it was more combative with our conversation and that's okay. You know, not knocking anybody, not saying this person is a bad person. I'm just saying it wasn't for me. And so, um, the biggest issue I had was I had went into detail about what it is that I'm doing. I had went into detail, um, let me go back so first of all you guys you guys know I have a interior design business so let me correct myself because I had an interior design business I no longer am dealing with the interior design business um God revealed to me to strictly just focus on communicating I can't remember if I let you guys know that I don't think I did so for all you that didn't know now you know okay (laughs) um So, yeah, I don't deal with my interior design business anymore. If you were following that page on Instagram, I swear to you, no lie, you can go look for it. It is not there. You can go look for my website. I have taken it down. I have closed my house account. I have closed, yep, everything says this business is closed. Okay? So, um, I went into detail to telling this person, you know, just opening up to them, having a conversation about, you know, that I'm really stern on support. Um, I'm really a person that needs support. And this is something that I wasn't trying to hide because I have dealt with in the current and past where people will support, but when it's time to support, there is no support. And I realized that sometimes people see the potential in you before you see it. And so they support as long as you're still thinking about an idea, their support soon as you still um, I can't speak. <laughs> they support you soon as you're making plans and planning it out. As long as it's still on paper and it's not actually being worked on, they're supporting you. And to be honest, I haven't even experienced that where I've had just me being in the works and somebody that actually says, oh, I think you should do this or I think you should do that. Um, Like I said, when it comes to business, I didn't have any support. Um, I really had to honestly pray about everything because... um. I just didn't have that support. And now I realize that I'm thankful for honestly not having that support because God was able to equip me with what it is that I need to do. As you guys know, I am the fasting queen. And so around this time last year, when I was on my fasting sprees, I literally did like seven sprees and like uh, seven, I'm talking about seven sprees. <laughs> I literally did seven fasts um, within a matter of three to four months last year. And so I did a fast about, um, I did a seven day fast seven days for seven things. And one of those would be in com- um, that conversation, but one of those would be regarding my business. And I had been feeling like for a long time that God had called me from interior design, but I didn't let it go because I had started doing my mood board workshops. And if you guys have attended one of those mood board workshops, it was a great experience. I was like, wow, this is awesome. The vibe is cool. We're having a good time. These people are learning. And so I struggled with letting that go because I had just started to find my niche. I had started to really see what it is that I was called to in design. And so I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, you know, I was telling my um, my actual, my mentor, I was telling her that I have been battling for a long time because I felt like God had told me to let that go. And I said, you know, I want to make sure I hear him clear because I don't want to let it go if that's not what I'm supposed to do. And I think that was more so me of, I want to make sure, make sure that he's telling me to let this go because I would hate to let it go and have to start from scratch. And so... Um, God has still been kind of revealing to me to let it go. And so I told her a couple of times we talked and she was like, you know, have you decided, you know, have have God responded? And I said, no, you know, I still feel the same way. I said, maybe I can turn it into an education tool because I realized I had did some research and I realized that the number one issue in interior design was that people felt like they were left out of an interior design's work. They felt like it was gorgeous. It was glam, but they weren't included in those services. So my thing was, I'm going to include you. So I broke my design down in three different phases. And I also created the mood board workshops. So that way you create your own, um, how can I say it? That way you create your own design. Literally, everything you put together is you. And I don't want you just putting together some cute pictures, some cute vibes. I want you actually putting together your living room, your closet, your bathroom. I want you actually designing your home. 
So this was honestly, I was trying to create a self-serve interior design business. And with the three phases I did, it broke down and you could choose what you wanted me to help you with. So it gave you really, um, honestly, the 100% leeway to everything. You tell me what I can do for you, basically. And so I was just like, I finally got it. I figured it out. It just came to me. I changed my website or not changed my website, but I updated my services, updated this, started posting. I read it in my apartment, everything. And so I sat here and I had a conversation with my sister and um, I, I changed. Uh, let me let me edit that. OK, so when I said that I didn't have any support in my business a lot because my sister, my sister is my number one supporter. She has believed in me from day one when I started my businesses, all my ventures and my little rants. And if you know me, I go, I bounce from one thing to another. And I'm trying not to do that this year because I find that I take on too much and I'm always walking down a path that God never led me to. But she's always there. She's always supportive. She's always finding something. She's showing it to me. You know, we're always, she's always been there supporting me. And this is a person that doesn't have a business. You know, she's not, um, a six figure six CEO, but that just goes to show you the right support will will think about you when they see the slightest things. Um, something as an Instagram post, a networking event, a group, you know, somebody we would be at work and she would send me stuff. Um, we would be on Instagram, she'd send me stuff. You know, it's just that's how it go, and that's how my accountability partner is now. Anytime I see something that can help her, I send it. Anytime she sees something that can help me, we send it. That's what real support looks like. Um, however getting back on topic so um I was talking to my sister having a conversation with her and she had revealed to me the same thing that God had told me when I did my fast and I asked God I said God what is it that you'd have me do what is it that you want me to do and God said clear as day I want you to communicate at that time I did not know it was going to be podcasting. Had you told me I would have been podcasting, I would have looked at you like, girl, stop playing. I ain't getting on no podcast talking to these people. (laughs) But here I am. So never say never. But um, yeah, God revealed to me that he wanted me to communicate. And so I prayed again. I said, okay, God, you want me to communicate? What do you want me to do? And um, shortly, a couple of days after that, he started revealing me through the podcast. And I said, I can never do that. How can I do that? It's not a way for me to do that. So I started researching stuff and it came... Literally, boom, 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 back to back to back. I got ideas. And I said, okay. And so I played around with it, planned it out. One night, I literally was asleep. I got up and recorded my trailer. And I put that out before I started doing my episodes. And, you know, I knew that this was the right thing. And so as I'm on this call, I'm just letting this person know. Um, Actually, just being vulnerable. Letting them know that I'm serious about what it is that God has called me to do. Because I've been a person where I haven't taken the God-given talents that he's given me to do what it is that he's called me to do. I've done so many things. I've done hair. Um, I've done interior designing. Um, I know how to do nails. You know, I know how to do a lot of stuff. But it comes down to, is this making God proud? Is this what God wants me to do? You can do nails and still be doing the works of the Lord because you could be preaching a testimony to the people while they, you while you're doing their nails and you won't even know it. And that's the thing that gets me because people, um, they talk about manifest. And I know I talked about this in the last episode. If you haven't heard it, pause this and go back. Manifest is manifesting versus believing God. And I wanted to break that down because people get the two of those mixed up. They paint this life that we can create a life that we want. And that is not true. I do believe that you can manifest what it is that God has aligned for you in his plans. You can also lead yourself astray or you can let someone else lead yourself astray to a path that God never called you to. But I guarantee you the end route will always be where God wanted you to be. And you may feel like, oh, I've tried this business. I tried this business. I tried this business. And you ended up in the very place where either you started or you were supposed to be. Either way, that's where you ended up and you're the most successful. That's where God has called you to. And so, again, I'm just on the phone call um, reiterating this, just letting her know, you know, I'm serious about what it is that God has called me to do. And the whole time I'm talking... All I just keep hearing is like, well, how is this going to profit you? How is this going to make money? And how is this, that, that? And I was just like, wait a minute. For me, it's not about making the money. Because once God has 
called you to it, there's nobody that can stop you. Once you get that thing rolling, all you have to do is start rolling the ball. And once the ball is rolling, you will have every essential that God gives you. Everything that you need is already provided for you. And so, you know, I kept making this a point to where it's not about what I'm making. It's about what I'm doing. Because somebody, to me, in my opinion, somebody that walks in the God-given call that they did not expect doing, and they actually said yes to that call, to me, that's a person of integrity. That's a person that laid down their life and said, God, use me as a vessel. Let me be the revival that you're looking for. Let me be the change in the world that we're seeking today. So riches, money, cars, clothes can't buy that. Boy, your your soul eternally will lavish from that because you have given your life to Christ and you don't even know you was going to do it. I didn't even know it was going to bring you back to Christ, you know? And sometimes people think about, oh, like how I'm going to preach to the world. And it's not really about preaching. It's about a relationship. It's about telling people the real deal, the things that God has done for you. The stuff that I record on this podcast is not me making this stuff up. This is real life stuff that I've experienced. These are things that I have currently or past tense went through. This isn't something that I'm looking up on Google, trying to get topics, trying to figure out what's trending. No, I'm trying to figure out what God's trying to tell me to tell you. Because I know that in this season, you may feel like, I don't know where to go. You may feel like I don't have any support. I don't have anybody. And then the person that you think is going to help you, you get all the way to a conference call or to a meeting and you realize that this is not even where I'm supposed to be. And I think a lot of times when we talk about mentoring and we talk about coaching and we talk about accountability partners, the people that we have have to meet those aspects and you have to um, figure out what that looks like. Do your research. Um, The thing that bothered me most on this call is the fact that I kept iterating that this is what God ordained me to do. And they also... You know, reiterate, like, you know, God has called us to many incomes and God has called us to riches and God has called us to be successful, which is all true. God has called us. He don't want us to struggle. He didn't create a life of poverty for us. That is true. But what you're not going to tell me is you're not going to tell me that I have found what it is. I have listened, heard God speak to me and tell me what exactly what it is that I needed to do. And I'm going to sit here and go against what it is that God told me to do. That's what you're not going to do. And that was my whole issue. So my message from this story is don't let nobody, I don't care who it is, your pastor, your husband, your wife, your kids, your friends, your cousin, your sister, your mother. Do not let anybody that somebody tell you what God told you. Okay, because that is, I take that so serious, dude. Like, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. You have to be serious. You literally have to be serious about what God has called you to do. Because, like I told you in the Power of One episode, you are the one that God has called. God can call many, but he only needs one. And I, oh, it pissed me off so bad, you guys. It did to know that someone walking behind God's word, living God's, I'm God this and, you know, I'm God first life and this and that and this and that. Someone could literally lead you astray and tell you because this isn't going to get you real dollars. I need you to get in a business that's going to make you money. And the sad part about that is, You didn't gain me as a client. You didn't gain me as a friend. You gained somebody else. And that person may very well be struggling to pay for whatever it is or do whatever it is. And they may not even be called to this. So I think that's really important. We have to get serious about what it is that God is doing. Um, The next experience, because I don't even want to talk about the first one anymore. I think I... Pretty much gave you guys the detail of that. Remember to never let nobody tell you what God spoke to you. If God spoke to you and called you to do something, he will call you through it and see you through it. At all times, by all means, at any cost. Anybody that tells you not to do it sees the potential in you. Okay? They see what it is that God is telling you to do. And like I said in the beginning, people see potential before you. And once you find, they support you up until you find that potential. And even some will support you once you find that potential. But when it starts 
flourishing, when it starts manifesting, the things that God has for you, that's when it becomes an issue. And you'll have people that will come down your path and try to steer you away from that. And it's not even, like I said, it's not nothing towards this person. This is just, this ain't even about them. This is about you. This is about making sure that you're paying attention because the devil will use tactics. And sometimes God will even test you to see how true are you to what it is that I called you to. Are you about riches or are you about saving? Which one are you going to go for? Because you could very well be making money in the industry to save and get paid. God got you. <sighs> Whew, had to get out of my chest. <laughs> and you guys, I don't want this episode to be like really, really serious. I don't want you guys to be over there like, ooh, she's such your wigs. You know, but I really, I have been holding this in for so long. Like I said, with the first, this, is, this happened recently. So the other situation was I was in a mentoring group. And this is the thing that really got me because, like I said, on the phone call, I kept reiterating about support. And I also explained why I was so lenient on support. Because I have got support disguised as jealousy, support disguised as competition, support disguised as everything else besides the right support. And I am no longer in a place, mentally, spiritually, or physically, to deal with a person that supports me in the wrong way. And I don't want you to do that. I don't want to I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I made trusting people and trusting people with your ideas, trusting your um friends or family with whatever it is that God has called you to do. I don't care what that looks like. It's a, it doesn't have to be business, but whatever God called you to. I need you to take that thing serious. If he's telling you to leave your job and move to another city, you do it. If God is telling you to um Take that bigger um, job, even though you feel like you're not qualified and people are reminding you that you're not qualified, take it anyway. If you're trying to take a um, certification course at school and people are like, why are you going to do that? You never went to school for that. You don't know anything about that. But God has showed you that this is what you called to do. If God ordained it, you go for it. Because when people try to steer you away from that, that lets you know you're on the right path. And I learned that. I'm still learning that. When people try to critique and criticize what it is that you're doing, when God has orchestrated it, you're not the problem. They are. So you keep going past what it is that they're doing. You keep looking past what it is that they're saying. You believe God. You pray on it. You fast on it. And you wait for confirmation. Do not make any hasty moves because of something somebody said. And don't listen to somebody telling you what you should do. Listen to what God told you to do. If God has called you to it, please do not remove yourself because of based off of what somebody else said like i told you guys um i did my sister hair i did her some knotless braids and i literally had a thought i could be sitting here getting my certification in braid i went to cosmetology school but that's not what i wanted to do but i know how to sit here and do knotless braids this is my first time doing them and they look good i can charge for these and god said i didn't tell you to do that and i said okay (laughs) shut me up here i am thinking i gotta be another little side hustle and glad I brought that up. I also saw something on Instagram the other day where it says that you don't have to, I'm trying to quote it correctly. It was saying basically that your side, your, your passion or your God ordained path or your passion, what God has called you to is not a niche and it's not a side hustle. And I thought that was awesome because I strongly stand on that. What God has called you to do is not a side hustle or a niche. It's something that God has placed in you and he's calling you to use. In order to sometimes create a lifestyle. Some of this stuff is business. Some of this stuff is not. It's to help people. Some of this stuff can get you farther in life. If you just listen to God and what it is that he's called you to do. And I really believe that. I saw that and I was like wow. Because you don't have a lot of people talking about this. You don't have a lot of people giving out their opinions on how this topic alone helps a lot of women. Um, And men too in business. You don't have a lot of talk about it because there's a lot of competition. There's not a lot of people standing up for sisterhood or brotherhood or livelihood, honestly. Um, There's not a lot of people supporting each other. We're all in the industry of whatever thinking that, oh, I have to do this better than that person. Or I have to get this before that person because we feel like it's a competition. But God told me, no, it's not a competition. That's your brother. That's your sister. And at the end of the day, you're eating. They're going to eat. I'm covering you just like I'm covering them. So you have to remember that this is not um, a warrior stance. This is not a battlefield of you have to knock down everybody. This isn't a football field. You don't have to tackle every other opponent because they're not your opponents. 
they're your teammates. And I think that was important because, like I said, a lot of people don't think about that. Are you loving this episode? Great. Don't forget to leave your feedback by rating and leaving a review on Apple iTunes. Also, don't forget to subscribe anywhere, wherever you're listening to this podcast. And make sure that you follow us on Instagram to keep up in the know of what's going on with the podcast. Okay, let's get back to the episode. So yeah, make sure you have um, that mindset to where we're not competitors, we're teammates, we're playing on the same team. So remember that when you see somebody that needs something that you have, use it, give it to them. Because let me tell you, when you do that and you pay it for it like that, somebody else will do you the same way and God will start opening doors. So you have to be mindful um, because you can block your own blessings by being a hater. (laughs) <laughs> sorry to say it so blunt but just just be real you can block your own blessings by having a hard heart and literally not being able to reach out and help other people how do you think you're going to make it and whatever it is that you're trying to do if you don't want to help somebody with something that you can help them with if you know you have information or it could be something so small that you can give someone that can help them and that same thing will be paid for it to you. Stuff will start coming to you out of the blue. And it's like, what did I do to deserve this? I think that's awesome. I say, be you, be true, be helpful because other people will also be helpful with it. They'll remember you. They'll recommend you. There's a lot of people in the industry doing a lot of things, but that person specifically will remember you. Be a great brand. Be unforgettable. Um. So yeah, back to the next incident so I was in a mentoring group and um, my accountability partner we were in there together Um, it was a women's group Um, and honestly the first meeting was awesome we talked about a lot of things Um, some things were just like okay you know all right kind of got a little clarity on some other things that I wasn't trying to you know get into personally but business wise um, that's what I was there for so it was awesome we had a great meeting and so I reached out had a one-on-one and things went great from there you know no problems so I started getting a feeling of overwhelmness from this group um I felt like God had told me to leave and I honestly didn't know how to process that um I didn't want to um make any hasty moves because maybe that was how I was feeling I felt I was being taken advantage of to be honest with you and now as the time flies I honestly feel like that was a God honest truth I felt like our ideas were being taken and used for their own benefit because I wasn't honestly benefiting from this group at all if we're being honest um and so at first again I wanted to make sure I wasn't self-imposing because sometimes I just feel like okay Jasmine you're making this about you and it's not about you And so I think that's something that we really all need to take an aspect of. Whenever something happens, make sure that you're not self-imposing it and that you're not basically uh, just making this stuff up. Make sure it's actually happened because I've had incidences where I thought it was something that I'm like, oh, girl, no, it wasn't that. But if it's happening, it's happened. There's no denial in that. But take that self-imposement test and make sure. Um, So... We had an incident there, and I, like I said, I felt like our ideas were being used um, not to benefit us, but to benefit the person uh, that was running the group, and I honestly didn't know how to feel about that because, like I said, I'm big on support, and my biggest issue is getting around someone and trusting them because I'm a person where I don't open up easily. I don't let you in my business easily. I don't let you in my business easily. Um, that's just not who I am. And so for this person, I was like, you know, they're talking about the Lord, they're God or day, you know, she's just talking like a woman of power. And I really thought that, you know, this person is actually God led. And I do think there were some things that were talked about in our conversation that probably were God led that I needed to hear for my own benefits. But a lot of things that started going moving forward um, just didn't make a lot of sense. And I'm like, and you're attaching God to this. I really didn't agree with that. And so I'm like, I don't like how people take God and they use it as they use him as an orchestra. Like they make sure they put God somewhere in their um, 
plan, I guess, or they make sure they mention God or something like that. Like, oh, this is God ordained and stuff like that. And then if it's God ordained, okay, cool. You'll know that you'll be the test of that. Because let me tell you, when you're talking to someone, they will always know what you're thinking without you saying it. Things will always come up without you even mentioning it. Um, I know for some of you, there may be episodes where you feel like I literally was talking to you. That's not me. That's God. There's sometimes where I listen to episodes and I'm like, God, this is hell on. That's like when you go to church, there's a sermon. There's a voice there speaking directly to you. You really feel like the pastor is like talking to you because of what they're saying. And that lets you know that the Holy Spirit is there. God is using them to speak to you. Know that, you know, know how to seek God. Know when God is there and when God is not. And so, <clears throat> as I stated, I felt like this was just a personal gain. And so, I started kind of like backing out. And so, I remember having a conversation one day about this very topic. And um, things just started getting weird. I was like, you know, I kind of, I wanted to bring it up. But I felt like this person was avoiding me. And so, I prayed about it. And God was like, let it go. That sometimes things are better left unsaid. Just do what I told you to do. And so I prayed about it and um, I didn't think I talked to my sister about it. I didn't talk to my accountability partner because like I said, I feel like, okay, maybe I'm the only one experiencing this. Even though I know it happened, I didn't want to give a bad judgment off on somebody that I met through her. And I didn't want to self-impose my thoughts on something that may not be affecting her. So I wanted to make sure that what I was experiencing was, was something that was worth talking about. So I told myself excuse me I said if she breaks it up we'll talk about it but until then I'm not opening my mouth and so we talked about I think there was a meeting that I missed and we talked about that and again like the call (laughs) she didn't mention anything that happened to me with the person that she experienced this issue with and it just started coming out and I said wow this is good because it lets me know that I'm not tripping what happened happened and it's time for me to leave and so the bad thing about it was (laughs) It was so crazy because me, her, and another young lady, she left the group as well because she felt the same way we felt. And I was like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want this to look like it was pre-planned. I don't want it to look like, you know, we just sat up in a room one day and said, oh, this is what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. Because that wasn't it. Um, I had already been thinking about this, but I want, like I said, I'm a, I'm at a place where I don't want to make any hasty decisions because I tend to jump off of the deep end with my feelings. So I didn't want to act out of my feelings. I wanted to act rational. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to go ahead and make sure that, you know, that was the right thing to do. And so I reached out, told her, you know, to God on the truth because God had called me to do other things. I had just got a, a new shift at my job. God had told me that, you know, he was providing the time for me to make for my business, um, that the people that I needed in my business would come. And so I just told her, you know, hey, you know, God's really putting me in another direction because that was the God on the truth. That is the God on the truth. It still is. God has still been blessing me in my business regardless. And the people that I needed in my business are in my business. And that was one of the things that he revealed to me. The people that I have for you will come. Be patient, do as I say, and be obedient. And so I want to remind you guys that whatever you're going through, I don't care what it is. If you're trying to leave a relationship, you're trying to let somebody go. Um, If you're trying to um, work on a relationship, if you're trying to do something involving your kids, whatever it is. Like I said, I don't know your personal life. Um, Career-wise, school-wise, life-wise, job-wise, car-wise, house-wise. You know, (laughs) whatever you're trying to do, if God told you to do it and you want support in that, it may not never come. And I want you to hear me on that because you'll be like, yes, girl, that's so true. You right, because I ain't had a person support me yet. And that may very well be true. But remember, hear this, it may never come. Am I saying that, no, you're not going to have a person that supports you? No, that's not what I'm saying. The support may not come the way you see it. Because I have a great accountability partner and my sister. They support me, God on the truth. Sometimes I'm like, dang, we just need more. And God told me you have exactly what you need. I have a great mentor, have a great accountability partner, and I have my sister. That's all I needed. Three people. And the crazy story about my mentor, um, I started mentoring with her in 2017 with SCORE. If you're not familiar with SCORE, if you have a business, I definitely say get enrolled. They're doing virtual meetups um, online. 
it's people that's retired or have businesses and they can help you with anything you need. You don't have to pay these coaches uh, hundreds and thousands of dollars um, because this is a free service. They're volunteers and you schedule whenever you want to go. They have locations everywhere. Jacksonville, Atlanta, Tallahassee. They have them everywhere. Um, I'm pretty sure if you need help with business, they will definitely help you. Um, my mentor is awesome. I met her in 2017, and uh, we got together starting off my, she told me how to go about doing my design business, that took off, and I moved to Atlanta, came back, started to go to score again, because I thought about her, and I ended up booking a meeting, didn't know who was going to be with, because I didn't know how to get in contact with her, and to God be the glory, it was her, and when I got to the meeting, I kept staring, because she looked a little different, she had lost the weight, and I told her, I said, Kathy, Kathy. I know that's not you, Kathy. And she was like, Jasmine, I remember you. You're back from Atlanta. And I was like, this is nobody but God. <laughs> like, let me tell you, okay? Let me tell y'all. This lady has been such a blessing to my life. I want to do something special for her one day. I don't know what it is because she, listen, this lady be on trips. She be out in the world, okay? But the point is, the people that are supposed to be there will be there. Even if you try to leave them. Okay, I had moved to Atlanta. Hadn't talked to say I actually had an appointment to meet up with a score mentor in Atlanta. I never did it because my schedule. But when I got back to Jacksonville, for some reason, that was the first thing on my list. And I ended up meeting with her, and we've been in contact ever since. That was in 2018. It's 2020, and we meet up and talk once a month. Um, I tell her my plans, tell her what I've got going on. She gives me her real insight, tell me how I can do that. I tell her about my business accountability partner. You know, we check in with each other, make sure we're good. Um, I run stuff by my sister just to get her ideas, ask her, you know, hey, how you think this going to go? Because my, my sister is like the realistic side of everything. She's going to tell me real straight up. And Kathy will too. Um, Brie will too. She'll just, she'll give me more leeway. Um, but I think that they, those three I'm telling you, I never saw it coming. Um, like I said, my sister has always been there. Um, but it helps to have that other stance because I don't always want to weigh her down with my business stuff because she's trying to do her own stuff. And so I think it's great that you get somebody that you can actually trust, somebody that has your best interest at heart. And, and I can't even say my my best friend, Brandon. Um, he has went, he's been such a support too. He listens to the podcast. Um, he goes... We went to open houses with my real estate company. He helped me put together boxes, him and his wife. You know, support doesn't always look financial. It, they don't have to always agree. You know, that's been so, like, even with the design business, he didn't agree with me getting rid of the design business, but he supported my decision. And that's what support looks like. Support looks like even when you feel wrong, that person still sees that it's right. And their mindset doesn't depict what you are supposed to do because they don't know what God told you. And so in this group um, that I was in, you know, I was just like, okay, you know, I really just feel like this is a playground. And so I finally decided to leave and it's honestly been sail breezing from here. Um, I just really, 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 really think that you guys should make sure that whoever you're telling your business to, whether that's personal or your business, make sure you're telling the right people because the right people will get you essentials to help see that grow. If you're trying to work on your relationship, if you're trying to build friendships, if you're trying to meet the right people, you're trying to invest in this and that, get with people that you trust and that actually line up to what support looks like. And ask yourself, like, am I supporting this? Are they supporting me? You know? And like I said, it's not always financial. Support comes in many ways. Sharing, liking, recommending, anything. You know, support comes in so many ways, but I want you guys to remember that when God calls you to something, he'll get you through it. He told you to do it. Nobody can tell you not to. And sometimes that's the mistake that we make because we sometimes lead ourselves astray. Um, sometimes we put the blame on the devil. We give him more credit than he honestly deserves. Um, sometimes we lead ourselves astray. If we're being honest, I've let myself down a path a long, long, long time. Like I said, I've done so many businesses and yeah, it was profitable. When I was in high school, I made so much money doing hair. It honestly got the bills paid after my dad died. Um, it, it did a lot for me. But was that what God called me to do? No, it's not. So whatever you're doing, whatever you're trying to do, if God has taught, called you to do it, trust God. Take a leap of faith. And let me t let me define leap of faith. Leap of faith is not just you waking up one morning and saying, I'm just going to quit my job and trust God that he's going to get it done. That's not a leap of faith. That's crazy. 
<laughs> now, if God has been tugging on you to leave your job and he's been tugging on you for years, but you need financial security because you don't know how the bills are going to get paid because what he's calling you to do doesn't really pay the way that you're getting paid now. But God is saying, trust me. God is saying, take that faith and leap with it. You decide to wake up, pray about it. Wait for God to tell you the yes, because it, he can also reveal something to you, but it may not be the time to do it. So make sure when you're doing things that God has ordained the time for that. Make sure you're doing it right at the right time, because a wrong premature step can make a long difference. Trust me. <laughs> um, But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. I'm glad I got that out. Oh, I feel like a weight was lifted off me. Um, I was going to do a live episode regarding this, but then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? It's not even that deep, sis. It's not that deep. I don't have to get on live and tell y'all I'm going to record it because it needs to be heard. And I want you guys to know that real support is out there. People that will support you are out there. Keep praying. Okay. I've been praying for my friendships. And my relationships, everything. I've been praying for that. I cannot tell you how many times I've prayed for God to send me friends like me. And I'm kind of low-key that God didn't send. I I can't even say that because I have more friends now that resemble me. Our mindset and the way that we think are so lined up, it's crazy. You'd be like, y'all faking. Like, y'all ain't friends for real. Y'all ain't friends. But we are. And I think that's what support looks like. I think that's what friendship looks like. Real genuine authenticity you don't have to fake anything you can trust them and tell them stuff that you probably would have never told someone that you've known for years because you couldn't trust that person but when it's God ordained you know how to move so I want you guys to think about what it is that God has been tugging on your heart with and know that God gives you the support that you need and never stop praying about it Do not give up on God because he definitely will not give up on you. The support that you need will be there. If you're trying to move and you want to start a new life for your family, be your number one supporter. That's one thing because a lot of times we don't support ourselves and we look for validation in other people. And when we don't get it, we tend to lead astray from what it is that God told us to do because, oh, this person doesn't see fit. But that person wasn't there when God told you to do it. That person wasn't there when he revealed to you what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. And sometimes it's crazy because we'll sit here and we'll try to let them see. We'll try to make them see and they still don't get it. And we still try to make them see it. Again, I've been there. I've done that. But you know what God revealed to me? That after you do what he told you to do, he will keep you. Okay? It's like, um, last story. And I'm going to let you guys go. Um, cause it's kind of winded, <laughs> but when I moved to Atlanta, um, people, they didn't agree. Um, when I got my design certification, my grandma was like, you went to school for design and now you think you're just going to be this great designer. And that's just a joke. Literally. It's a joke. Why would you think that's going to happen? And, um, people just didn't, they didn't support it. And they're like, oh, you're going to pay $1,200 for rent. Why would you do that? You could stay in a, a basic neighborhood. And so I kept defending my decision. I kept defending what it is that God wanted me to do. I got two jobs, worked two full-time jobs. At one point, worked three full-time jobs. Um, I got two full-time jobs, worked, saved. I cried so many days, you guys. I cried tears because I felt like maybe I had self-imposed. It's like this was something that I wanted more than what God had for me. And so I prayed about it and I said, okay, God, I'm doing this stuff. Even though the signs are aligned, this job came to me out of the blue at the nick of time, literally uh, like two days before the hiring date cut off, I was hired and it was overnight and I was able to No, it was during the day and my uh, Citibank job was overnight and I was able to literally work overnight in Citibank finish up working at Infinity, and then go to ERC. So I was able to work ERC and Citibank. And I literally worked ERC for two months. And I worked Citibank from January to October. And I moved in October, the end of October. And so um, I didn't have as much money as I needed to be safe because I was clearing things off my credit. I had a $3,500 debt that I needed to pay pay off. I got that paid. That boosted my credit. My credit was $730. 
And so I was afraid because I was like, okay, God, you making all this stuff happen, but people they believe in me. People not seeing what you told me. People not seeing what you called me to do. And God said, I don't care. Do it. Keep going. I got you. Okay? It's two months before it's time for me to move. I have $1,300 stay up. I tell you guys no lie, $1,300. And that was just enough to pay for my rent. Within the next two months, I had $6,000. I didn't have nobody sending me no money. How'd that happen? And still paying off a $3,500 debt. Still clearing off stuff off my debt. Yeah, I'm working two full-time jobs, but $3,500, that's two checks from one place right there. And my ex, he did give me like $800, so let's count him in there. <laughs> let's be real. Come on, now. I got there, paid $100 for my deposit, smooth sailing, moved in, got my, uh, I didn't know how I was going to get there. I was like, I don't have nobody to help me move, because at the time, me and my ex had just separated, and I thought it would be awkward for him to help me, so I was like, you know, he's like, I'll help you, and I was like, no, I'd rather you not, <laughs> but my cousin helped me, one of my good friends, she helped me, um, and just... <sighs> It happened, you know, even in the midst of people telling me, no, when God tells you, yes, man, I know you guys see this, this quote all the time. When God says, yes, nobody can tell you no, but I need y'all to believe that. I said in Atlanta for a year, um, I struggled finding a job that paid well. And when I did find a job that paid well, God told me to come back. Um, I almost got an eviction because I was working at Macy's, loving what I did, but I wasn't making enough. My savings was gone by February. And people had so much to say. And was I ashamed? Yes, I was. But let me tell you, God kept me. God kept me and I was able to stay um, up until my lease ended. And I was going to renew my lease because I, again, had just found a job that was paying good. And I know I've probably told this story to you a million times. But I want you guys to know that if you go back and listen to every episode, this story lines up. This is not a fairy tale. God made this happen for me and he can do it for you. I knew what God told me. I didn't care what other people said. Let me tell you, everybody had an opinion. If my daddy was still living, he would have definitely not been for me moving to Atlanta. And I would have said, Daddy, I love you, but I got to go. And I feel like that was just something that I needed in order to become the me that I am today. And I didn't understand that then, but I understand it now. Because I'm a better person than I was that year before I left. Leaving for a year and coming back was the best thing that I could have ever did for myself. I was relaxed up there. I lived the best life. I was by myself, okay? My family came to visit me. me. My relationships was better. It was awesome, you guys. And imagine how it would have been had I said, no, I'm not going to do this. I can't do this. How am I going to move to Atlanta? I don't have people up there. I don't know nobody. That's stupid. Why would I do that? So I want you guys to take this and apply it to your life. I'm not saying God's telling you to move. I'm not saying God is telling you just to pack up and leave. But if that is what God is telling you and God is telling you that, not no person coming up to you prophesying and God didn't reveal that to you. Because if God revealed it to them, he's going to reveal it to you or he has revealed it to you. And that's one thing that you guys need to realize about prophets. It's going to either make sense or you're going to be like, huh? (laughs) But yeah. Get serious, man. Um, Be your number one supporter. Know that God is your number one supporter. So you be your number two supporter. And then appreciate the people that you have to support you. And know that the right support, if you don't have it now, will come later. And remember that you can also be support to somebody else. So I hope this episode was awesome. (laughs) I hope it resonates with you some way, somehow. Um, I don't know what it is that you're going through. I don't know what it is that you're believing God for, but just believe God that he got your back, man. He will have your back. And whatever people are telling you, how crazy you may sound, how crazy you may look, whatever people are telling you, rule that out because that's not the truth. That's an attack of the enemy. And he wants you to know that he knows that you're on your way to the fullest potential. When you get that little mustard seed of faith and you take it and exceed that, you think he going to like that? No. 
And sometimes it could just be God testing us. Say, okay, you got a little, you got a li- little, little <laughs> mustard seed of faith. But how much more can you do? How long, how much longer can you trust me? Are you just trusting me for this week? Are you just trusting me for next week? Or are you trusting me with this thing until it happens? And I think that's so real. We have to take it at face value and trust it. And trust it even when the answer is no. Trust it even when the answer is wait. Trust it regardless. So, that's that. <laughs> I know I went a little over today, but I love you guys. Um, take a deep breath. You got this. God's got you. I want to keep reminding you to keep shining as the gems you are because in God's eyes, you are perfect. No matter how many times we mess up, God forgives us. Never forget that. I will see you next week. Bye.